Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be making this walnut cover that fits over a dog kennel and turns it into a piece of usable furniture. All right, so I actually started this off last weekend. I went and got everything milled up and got some boards laminated to make my legs out of. I've had everything sitting here for the week and it doesn't look like anything's really moved at all. So most of my material for the styles and rails and everything is fine. I won't have to mill that again. The legs, I will. The edges aren't perfectly even and I wanna get that uh, flushed up anyway. So I'm gonna really quickly remill one side and one edge on each of these pieces for the legs and then I'll get everything cut down, get my rails and styles and my legs, all that cut out at once and then I can worry about start making sub assembly. So this week on this project, I'm just gonna jump right into it and get to making the major components. So I've got the first several of the panels glued up and the other ones will be right behind it. But just a quick note, when I ran these through the planer, I left them significantly thick when I did these. The reason is I'm gonna be gluing them up and, and there's just no way to get that perfect. Plus there's gonna be the glue lines, uh, you know, glue squeeze out and stuff. So I leave them thick, it makes it a little bit easier to glue them up, but it also means that once I'm done with the glue up, I can run it back through and get it down to my final thickness. So that'll be my next step after this will be to get it down to its final thickness, and then I will size them, and then I can move on to pre-finishing these panels. All 
All right, next step is to measure out these panels so I can get them cut down to size. To do that, I'm gonna use my standby trick of the two pieces of scrap that I'll expand inside the grooves. I've got the, in this case, my right side panel dry fit together. So I'm just gonna expand two pieces of scrap and tape them up. So they can measure them out. So it looks like nine inches exactly for that one. So my two right side panels and my two left side panels will all be the same width, but the they will be a different height. I had to leave a, a section on the left side open um, so that the bottom of the kennel can be removed, but everything else will be the same height. So when I cut these, I will cut the height pretty close, maybe a sixteenth of an inch undersized just for ease of assembly. On the width, I'm going to cut that down a little bit further, probably about an eighth of an inch just to give it room to expand and contract, but I don't want it loose enough that um, you'll ever see the sides of it. So now I know the height of the right side, the front, and the back panels. I know the width of the left side and right side panels, but I still have to assemble everything else just so that I can get the final dimensions on those to get the other ones. Okay, so let's talk about order of operations. I've made some progress here and I've got my, my left side, my right side, and my back um, lower panels pre-assembled. And now what I need to do is start worrying about the joinery between the panels and the legs. 
But in order to do that, I've got to get the order here correct. And I, I, I want to think through this a little bit because I've got two different height settings that I'm going to use on my mortiser to do these. I've got the height setting that is centered on a three quarter inch piece, which is all of my panels, which is the styles here and is also going to be for the top front rail which is a little bit different because when I mortise those into the legs, instead of it being like this, like the rest of the, the top rails will be, it will be flipped. So it'll be flat like this, which means the mortise for that references off of this side of the rail. So it needs to reference off the, the top of the leg. So I will actually need to mortise the rail or mortise the legs standing up like this. All of that will be done at the same height setting on the mortiser. Then for the legs themselves, I'm going to be offsetting these panels by a quarter inch. So I need to raise that mortiser up an additional quarter inch from where it is and then do all the legs. I want to do it in that order so that I'm not raising and lowering that mortiser and trying to go back to the same settings. I've got a pretty good system to be able to do that on that mortiser, but still, why move it if I don't have to? If I set it in place and I lock it, then I know it's the same. No matter which piece I grab or what order I do it in, it's all gonna be at that same setting. So first things first, all of the mortises on the three quarter inch pieces, then I'll go to the oddballs on the legs, and then I'll raise it up and I'll do the rest of them on the legs. All right, so I've got my front and back sub-assemblies all put together. And before I think about actually assembling them, I'm probably gonna go ahead and pre-finish everything, but also I need to adjust my tenons and my mortises a little bit. On all of these, I've got intersecting mortises. Not by much, not a big deal. I knew it was gonna happen and I'm planning around it. So that just means I need to trim up some of the tenons to install the side, but also across this top rail with the difference in direction in this rail here, I need to go ahead and, and haunch these two. So these ones aren't gonna be trimmed um, for the length, but I do need to haunch them.
Okay, so I brought the kennel cover in and I kind of fit it over the kennel just so that I can come in and, and verify a couple dimensions and that's spacing around the kennel inside of the cover. So when I build the top, I'm not going to permanently attach it to the kennel cover. I wanna be able to take this off easy, which means I wanna keep the weight down and so I'm gonna do it in two pieces and that's what you see here, the, the base of the, the cover and then the top. On the underside of the top, I'm going to have a couple of supports um, put in through sliding dovetails, but they will act to locate that the top on the kennel cover, and that's on the outside here. But I just wanted to verify the spacing I had around the kennel on either side of the top here. So that's gonna wrap this one up. As you can see, I've got the, the top on it and I've got everything sitting around the kennel. And I'm really happy with how it came out. Uh, it is a little bit of overkill using walnut for a project like this, but it's gonna be part of my living room furniture. And you can see where it sits right next to my couch is the reason I went with this and not something you know, a little more generic or plywood or, or some other less expensive wood. But it's gonna be here, it's gonna be part of my living room furniture, so I wanted to make it look like it belonged with the rest of my living room furniture and not this out of place eyesore that this kennel used to be. So I'm really happy with it and whatever life I get out of it, you know, I, I have a feeling she's gonna need it the rest of her life. So it's, it's not a waste. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I did enjoy this kind of off the wall oddball project. I, I know it isn't something that, that most people are gonna be able to use, but hopefully there was something that I did or some technique or something that, that helps you out. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.